Thank you for joining. In this lesson, we will complete the AutoMapper implementation for all other action methods in the controller. I will also explain AutoMapper related methods such as reverse map for members and map from. Before we proceed with the AutoMapper implementation in the remaining action methods of the Solar System controller, I'll provide a brief recap of what we covered in the previous lesson. The first step was to define an AutoMapper profile called Solar Systems Profile that was used to specify how to map properties from the Solar System Model class to the Solar System DTO class. When we used AutoMapper in our application, it used this profile to automatically map objects of these types. This helped simplify the process of transferring data between our application's domain and presentation layers. The second step involved configuring AutoMapper with the dependency injection system in our SPNet Core application. We registered the Solar System profile, which was an AutoMapper profile with the DI container. When we invoke Add AutoMapper during the application runtime, we instruct the application to utilize AutoMapper with the mapping configurations defined in the Solar System profile. This enables us to use AutoMapper with automatic object mapping between our domain and DTO classes across our application. By registering the AutoMapper profile with the dependency injection container, we can inject the mapper interface, which is provided by AutoMapper, into our services, controllers, or other components. AutoMapper will then handle the mapping based on the profile's configuration. In the third step, as we accomplished in the previous lesson, we injected the iMapper interface provided by AutoMapper. The iMapper interface is responsible for mapping objects from one type to another, based on predefined mapping profile class configurations. So, in the constructor of our Solar System controller, we injected the iMapper interface as a dependency by using it as a parameter in our constructor. In the getAllAction method, we retrieve a list of solar systems from our Solar Systems storage repository. These Solar Systems objects are of the domain model type, representing data retrieved from the database. Using the iMapper, we then map these domain model objects, Solar Systems, to data transfer objects of type Solar System DTO. This achieved with the following line of code. This line of code instructs AutoMapper to take the Solar Systems objects and map them to a list of Solar System DTO objects based on the mapping configuration defined in AutoMapper profiles, such as the Solar Systems profile. The mapping process typically relies on property names and types. After the mapping is complete, we return Solar System DTO, which now represents our Solar Systems as DTO within the response. iMapper is employed to facilitate the mapping of domain model objects, in this case, Solar Systems as the data source, to DTOs, specifically Solar System DTO as the target. This approach enables us to provide a structured and a well defined response to clients consuming our API. If the purpose of this code remains unclear, please refer back to the explanation provided in the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed the concept of reversing object to object mapping. We noted that duplicating code for reverse mapping can be complex. To simplify this process, we introduced the reverse map method. However, it's important to clarify that this method is not just for reversing the mapping, it's more accurately represented as a two part method. The first part of reverse map handles the forward mapping, while the second part performs the reverse mapping. Reverse map combines these mechanics to enable bidirectional mapping. Applying reverse map to a configuration instructs AutoMapper to automatically generate the reverse mapping configuration. In simpler terms, it creates a mapping from Solar System DTO to Solar System as well. This approach establishes a bidirectional mapping relationship between the two classes using the same mapping rules. It simplifies mapping in both directions without the need to explicitly define the reverse mapping. It's worth nothing that you can apply this method even when bidirectional mapping isn't immediately required. Doing so won't cause any harm. However, if your code evolves and bidirectional implementation becomes necessary, your code is already prepared for it. In our code, I will remove the second mapping rule, and for the first one, I will add the reverse map method. With this change, the code will function just as it did before. Additionally, there is no need to make any changes to the getAllAction method in the controller logic. 
AutoMapper will handle the mapping automatically. Now let's proceed to update the other methods within the Solar System Controller logic. In the getById method, we perform the same conversion with the Solar System DTO as the target. And the source will be the Solar System single variable, which retrieves the data from the repository class. For the Solar System DTO variable, Instead of hard coding the mapping, we can utilize the mapper to map from the destination Solar System DTO to the source, which is Solar System Single. With this change, this action method is also completed. Next method we will work on is the Insert Single method. This method takes the Insert Solar System DTO as a parameter, serving as the source in the controller's logic, while the Solar System model serves as the target. Since this mapping rule is not present in the mapping profile class, we need to add it. To create this mapping rule, we will start by copying the insert solar system DTO parameter from the insert single method in the controller. Then in the profile class, we will duplicate the section of code to create a new rule. In this new rule, we will paste the insert solar system DTO as the source, with the solar system as the target. Returning to the controller, we should remove the section of code with the hard-coded mapping and replace it with the mapper. In this case, the destination will be solar system and the source will be insert solar system DTO. For the second mapping, we already have the necessary mapping rule. In this rule, the destination in square brackets will be solar system DTO and the source will be the solar system. With this change, this method is also completed. Next method is update by ID, and the mapping in this method is done similar to the insert single rule. In the mapping profile, we can duplicate this mapping configuration where the source will be update solar system DTO, and the target will be the solar system model itself. In the controller, we will once again use the mapper to specify the solar system as the target, in alignment with the mapping rule, and the source will be the argument passed to the method. The second part of the mapping is performed similarly to previous methods, with the solar system DTO as the target and the solar system single variable as the source. This method is now complete. As you recall, the delete method doesn't require mapping, as it simply sends a text notification about the deletion. With these changes, the controller is now ready, and when tested in Swagger, it should function as before, but with a significantly reduced amount of code. So far, we have discussed implicit mapping, which occurs when names match, and AutoMapper can intelligently detect and map them, as we have seen with properties like name to name and so on. However, let's consider a scenario where the names differ, although this isn't the case for this project. To map properties with different names, we would need to use the forMember method. It takes two parameters. The first parameter specifies the destination property, and the second parameter is a custom mapping expression, typically defined using the mapFrom method. So, while this isn't relevant to our current project, we can demonstrate how to modify the custom mapping profile using for a member if we ever encounter such a situation. To gain a clear understanding, let's take an example from the controller class with the hard-coded mapping, such as the previous version of the controller. We can copy the necessary parts from a method, as an illustration. Now we can update the parameters of the for members method, where the name property will be mapped to the code property. Let's simplify the explanation further by adding some additional code for this method. We will create an instance of the update solar system DTO class and initialize its properties with specific values. Then using the mapper, we will map the properties from the update solar system DTO object to a solar system object. With the second variable, we can reverse this process. Now let's discuss in detail what this code is doing. First, let's consider the case with variable 1. In this mapping configuration, it specifies that the code property of the solar system, being the destination, should be mapped from the name property of the update solar system DTO acting as the source. Since the createMap method specifies the mapping from update solar system DTO to solar system, the code property of the solar system is set to the value of the name property of the update solar system DTO. However, when we reverse the mapping using variable 2, the name property of the update solar system DTO is set to Saturn. In this case, it's sourced from variable 1, 
where the object's solar system code property holds the value Saturn. This behavior aligns with the reverse mapping configuration we have specified, which essentially flips the mapping relationship. I understand it may be a bit difficult to grasp at first, but with practice it will become clear. Few more things to mention in this lesson. AutoMapper can automatically map collections, including lists by convention. For example, in the getAllAction method we have a list type object declared as a list. However, the mapping rule in the profile doesn't require explicit list implementation. Generally, AutoMapper can handle collections automatically in many cases. Explicit configuration may become necessary when there are differences in property names or when custom mapping logic is needed. And a few more important points to note. Firstly, during the recording of this lesson, I observed that the insert single and update by id methods are missing if statements inside the try block, which are necessary to verify the validity of the variable, similar to what's done in the get by id method. I won't extend this lesson by creating if statements here, as the procedure is quite simple. Instead, I will update the code later, and you can also implement it from your side. Then compare it with my code on GitHub. Secondly, we can remove the injected HiKaitokDB context, since it's no longer used. Lastly, as the project will include validations, in the next few lessons we will discuss model validations and model state. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!